Welcome back. We're at the RSA Security Conference here in San Francisco, California. My name is Paul Roberts. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Security Ledger. And we're here this week talking with some of the folks who have come out to the show. These are the thought leaders and experts in the information security field. RSA is a type of show where we all get together and look at stuff and talk Absolutely. about stuff and go to sessions. Uh, I'm really too, uh, happy to have with me uh, two gentlemen. Sean McHenry, you're the Chief Information Security Officer at the Utah State Board of Education. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> and Kelvin Coleman, you are the Executive Director of the National Cybersecurity Alliance, NCSA. Welcome. I am, and great to be here. It's great to have you both. <laughs> Okay, so we're back at RSA Security Conference. This is one of the big industry shows of the year, and I know you guys have been kind of making the rounds. So I guess the first thing I'd ask you is, um, it's kind of overwhelming. There's a tremendous amount of technology here. There are a tremendous number of companies uh, exhibiting here. Um, uh, you know, Sean, you're in a position as, a, as an end user, as a customer for some of these uh, companies. Um, what um, what do you what do you make of it all? And is there you know what what would you say is sort of uh, changed this year versus prior years? What are some of the trends that you're seeing in, t in the types of technologies and services that uh, that you're interested in and that are being offered? Well, this is actually my first RSA conference mm -hmm. that I've attended, and um, I've known about it. I've known the the magnitude that is this conference. Mm -hmm. I've taken a lot of pictures to send to my family <laughs> just to show them, you know, just the vendors yes. and, you know, two city blocks of vendors. Have you gotten t-shirts? I have more t-shirts than I can wear. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's a great opportunity to see not, not just the tried and true technologies, but some, some of the new emerging t technologies mm -hmm. and, and companies that are out there. It's, it's been really a pleasure. And Kelvin, NCSA, um, you know, such an important organization. Um, well, you know, kind of what's your perspective on the show? This is the, what, 28th year of RSA Security Conference? 28th right? year, and yeah. I've been here on the government side as well as the private sector side and NCSA. Yeah. And uh, it gets better every year. It mm -hmm. really does, I yeah. think, this year. And the thing that I like uh, a lot is you see companies that you know and recognize, obviously, and 32 of them on our board. Um, but you also see companies that you haven't heard of that you have to Google and figure out you know, what they're yeah. thinking. And I think that's a wonderful thing yeah. uh, to be able to have that type of innovation out there that's not just coming from those well-known brands, but coming from upstarts that's saying, you know, we can make this better as well. Uh, so that's the thing I love about this, uh, being here at this conference. Yeah. I think one thing that we've really seen a lot in the last few years uh, is an increasing amount of intention, uh, attention and concern about cybersecurity threats to the public sector. Sean, you're here from Utah. Um, what should we know about kind of uh, the, the state of play right now in the public sector and what some of the challenges that uh, state and local governments are facing in, in, in uh, the cybersecurity space? Well, you know, in, in the public sector, we do face a lot of the same um, as the private sector does. Uh, however, you know, we are under a much bigger microscope yeah. uh, with a whole lot more lights on yeah. us. Uh, whether it's the general public um, demanding transparency mm -hmm. and being able to have access to more and more of the data that, that we house, mm -hmm. to um, threat actors who have some kind of reason for trying to take us down, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of ax to grind, to nation states that are, are trying to infiltrate yeah. to, um, to either position themselves for something in the future or to disrupt services. Right. And NCSA, I mean, what's your, what, what is your organization's kind of perspective on, you know, some of the challenges both, you know, at the federal, state, and local government uh, level? I think Sean said it best in that we're all facing the same challenges. Mm -hmm. And because um, I, I, at the National Cybersecurity Alliance, we look at it in three buckets, right? Products, processes, and people. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really good at building products, as, you know, in the industry. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're here and, right. and they're doing a great job. Yeah. And uh, we love our processes. And we, mm -hmm. do that, we do that really, really well. Mm -hmm. We're here talking about the human element. That's the theme. That's the theme. And that last part for us, people, at the National Cybersecurity Alliance. Uh, that's the thing that we want to focus on. We make, make sure that folks understand they have a huge say in this, a huge part in this. Yeah. When you're looking at 83 plus, I think, 85% of breaches coming through some human era, yeah. and yet I think on average, in the public sector as well as private sector, about 15% 
of training and awareness budget will go to human beings. Yeah. It seems disproportional in that we need to flip that. Right. Because the human element, I think, is so key in mitigating the challenges. It's really true. And we've seen on the industry side certainly a response in that there are many more kind of uh, cybersecurity awareness and mm -hmm. uh, phishing mm -hmm. detection and training organizations that have come along. Uh, public sector organizations are taking advantage of those private sector organizations. Um, is is there a limit to to how how much risk you can uh, res, you know um, offload just through training and user education? Though I mean, is there um, is there a limit there to, to what we can do? Well, I think that when we talk about the training and um, you know, helping the end users to be part of the solution, uh -huh. uh, I, I really do think that there needs to be a shift in the way we address it. Okay. The annual cybersecurity training, um, I think, personally, I think is you know proven to be pretty ineffective. Right. You know, it's it's right. a box to check. We've got some regulation, you know, and so you know I in almost every meeting that I go to, try and put one little more nugget out there, you know, and that constant every day, every week, trying to reinforce the idea, this is everybody's bucket to carry. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the reasons, one of the areas we've really seen this problem come to light is obviously with the sort of uh, ransomware uh, infections that have, that have happened all over the country, you know, state, local governments, private sector obviously as well. We were talking before, ransomware isn't a new phenomenon, it's been around mm -hmm. for 20 years. I think what's different is um, that th these are really crippling organizations in ways that basically are impossible mm -hmm. to hide. Mm -hmm. You know, So it's going to make news. You know, If you're a public sector organization and you can't um, you know, send checks out or bills out or you know, provide a public service, uh, that's going to get noticed really quickly. From your perspective, has that has that changed the dynamic? Has it has it made um, it easier, maybe, for you to get the attention around cybersecurity issues and, and investments that uh, than than before? It it has, you know. Um, I mean, you got to love the press in <laughs> in being able to do part of the job for us. Yes. Yeah, you know, and but as as we as we sit down with with IT leadership, with leaderships within the agency, talking with the board. Um, this is some ransomware is something that is very much in the forefront of people's minds. Mm -hmm. But when we circle that back to the human element and and the people within the within the agency, mm -hmm. helping them to realize that you know you know think before you click. Yes, you know yeah. and right. you know and we we have a I've been able to institute a, a pretty. Uh, regular reoccurring phishing testing mm -hmm. that that I do and I work with uh, with my people mm -hmm. on, and um, that you developed yourself or that you, you no, using with? using vendors using vendors you know, yeah. to, to uh -huh. help to help do that. Uh -huh. But the program you know I put together mm -hmm. you know and and um, we we have seen some very significant uh, improvement in in uh, our users and the way they respond to phishing. You know, and and the thing that I like most about what's happening is not so much that they click or don't click, but when I walk the halls, I hear them talking about it. Yeah, yeah. That's the biggest success. Yeah, kind of the culture of security. And um, you know, Kelvin, I mean, what is what are your thoughts about um, you know again? You know, ransomware is really just a, a symptom, not a cause. But I mean, I think one of the other trends that we're seeing is, um, you know, organizations, private sector, public sector, are, you know, the, the, the relationship of the workforce to the, to the um, employer has really changed, right? Uh, it's much more fluid. Um, you know, bring your own smartphone, work from home, work from a Starbucks, right? So organizations are really, including public sector, are embracing those challenges, um, but it really increases their risk. Well, and, and we're going to see more of that risk being out there in the next several years because over the last, from, you know, the last five years, well, five years ago, we had about 15 billion connected devices. Wow. Uh, today, yeah. we have about 20 billion connected devices. Yeah. So at about a 25, 30% jump. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next five years, it's going to jump 300% to at least 60, 65 billion connected devices. Mm. And so this challenge that you're bringing up now uh, is one that we're really gonna have to think serious about and, sure. and, and, and take it serious. And I, I really applaud what they're doing in terms of, yeah, I got my vendor and he created something, but I made it specific to my 
uh, employees, that's what we encourage people to do. They know their culture best, and we want them to really build these programs so that their employees, their people, uh, can understand it best. Because for too long, we've treated human beings like computers. Check this box. Do this. Yeah. No. Right. You have to treat change your password. Right. Right. Change your password. Right. You know, we got to change that culture because. Huh. This technical revolution is not going anywhere anytime soon. So we talked about sort of uh, you know user education, uh, phishing detection, those types of things. Are there other things that that um, in your experience, both of yours, um, work in terms of um, you know raising employee uh, awareness or worker awareness of cybersecurity risks, uh, whether that's tools, technologies? Well, being in education, yeah, um, it's there. There's very much a push toward using technology in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so technology is really on the forefront of um, everybody's sure mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, what, what can we do to improve the education of our kids? Mm -hmm. And so because technology is, is there, and because we have a lot of people who really do want to do the right thing, um, it, it really does help. Mm -hmm. you know? um, one of the biggest, you know, we talk a little bit about culture and you know, in in that same vein, I, I think more of you know trying to break the inertia hmm. that that we 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 have people that want to do the right thing but don't necessarily know how to do the right thing. Right, right. Or they 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 have in their mind, I, I need this technology because it's going to benefit education, and trying to get them to break their their thought process of. But what's it? What could it do if you implement um, an untested technology into your environment? Right. You know, and so just having those conversations and trying to break that inertia. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I mean, you know, even in even as IT professionals, we we have that same thing. You know, we need to break the inertia in cybersecurity professionals. Doing cybersecurity five years ago when almost everything was on-prem mm -hmm. to doing cybersecurity testing and ensuring um, that we've, we've got good controls in place in the cloud, those are two different things. Yes. You know, we've, we have to break our thought process and focus on what that new technology is. Calvin, you mentioned you've been doing some some talks while you're out here mm -hmm. with uh, you know representatives from the FBI and and law enforcement. Um, what's the message that you're hearing from them? Partnership, got to partner uh, at all levels, uh, local levels, um, state level, federal level, mm -hmm. private sector mm -hmm. partnerships. That's been the big thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've uh, heard it said yeah. uh, several times this uh, this week. Uh, Cybersecurity is a team sport. It yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Um, is that there, or is that a, is that a work in progress? I guess is um, uh, in your experience is work it, in progress. Yeah, work yeah. in progress, but getting better. Yeah, I've seen it much better uh, over Absolutely. the last several years. Um, you know, years past, FBI or others may have been reluctant to talk yeah. to you know, uh, you know, Utah or California or, or you know Topeka, Kansas. Right. Uh, but that's changing because it is a team sport. The bad actors are partnering. They're collaborating. They're coordinating. Far be it for us to not do the same thing. Right, right. Um, and uh, final advice to uh, folks out there who, um, you know, are, like Sean, are working in the public sector, working in public center agent sector agencies or organizations um, about uh, cyber risk. What, what's something that they can? What are some things that they can do that's going to have the biggest bang for its buck in terms of really reducing their cyber risk? I, I think you said it, don't recreate the will. There are resources out there, there are people out there, there are organizations out there who want to help, want to partner, uh, National Cybersecurity Alliance being one, but there are others out there uh, who want to do the same thing. I know the FBI was just talking to us about, make sure that we're, you're connecting us, Kelvin, two different communities, mm -hmm. two different organizations. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing, don't recreate the will, let's work together and take advantage of the resources that are currently out there. Uh, CISA, uh, Cybersecurity Infrastructure and Security Agency, mm -hmm. they've got a whole program built around this. Um, and so we're trying to beat that drum to make sure people understand that you don't have to recreate the will. We're there to partner with you. Okay. John? B very much, you know, in agreement. But if in one word, relationships. Mm. Uh -huh. You know, that um, it's, it's one thing to have a, you know, vendor relationship and, you know, you're my vendor 
but to have that personal relationship that you know get to know the people that you work with mm -hmm. you know, what are their interests and their hobbies and you know develop those relationships mm -hmm. and I think that would go a long long way in you know strengthening the bonds of cybersecurity. Kelvin, National Cybersecurity Alliance, um, if folks aren't familiar with it, just give us, a, give us a little overview of what NCSA does. The National Cybersecurity Alliance is a public-private partnership model uh, where we work with the federal government, particularly the Cyber uh, Infrastructure and Security Agency uh, at the Department of Homeland Security, as well as our 32 companies, uh, to bring cyber education awareness to the American people. Okay. We're talking 360 million Americans in 50 states and six territories. We want them to know about these emerging technologies and what it means for their daily lives. And uh, at the National Cybersecurity Alliance, we utilize things uh, such as uh, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month in October, Data Privacy Day, Cybersecure My Business. Uh, we have a great partnership with the NASDAQ, where we're really trying to make sure folks understand what cybersecurity means for their everyday lives. Calvin Coleman, NCSA, John McHenry, State of Utah, thank you so much for coming in and speaking to us uh, at this RSA conference. It's been great having you on. It's been fun being here. Absolutely great to be here. Great.